You ready for this, kiddo? Another daddy-daughter expedition. Hey guys, how are you? We're gonna do something a little different today. Something that I grew up doing in Massachusetts. And that is, we're gonna go look for cohogs. And cohogs are a clam, and they make clam chowder, which I love. And it just so happens my mom has got an incredible recipe that I have no idea how old it is, but it's older than me. Millions of years. Millions, yes, millions. We better not say that. Grandma's not that old. Anyway, um, so yeah, the smaller ones are called cherry stones. The bigger ones are called cohogs. We always ate them raw. And then the bigger ones we turn into chowder, so. I got a school like an hour ago. That's right. Ben's, I was so happy for this. Ben's doing homework. Poor Ben. And mom's helping and working. Poor mom. Anyhow, let's go get him. It's a big, big jelly. So, here's the deal guys, when you're doing this, you always gotta pay attention to the tide. You wanna be doing it on a low, outgoing, low tide, because when you anchor your boat and go ashore, and the tide's going out, your boat may be laying on its side if you're not paying attention. I can see somebody's already been in here digging. You wanna make sure that you're not stirring it up too much, okay? The current's going out, so it should take the sediment with it. Boat should be good. You need a hand? There's a lot of quahog shells, big ones. We really gotta keep an eye on that boat, okay? And you know daddy's memory, I'll forget. This is what we're looking for, except alive, guys. It's an old one. It looks like an Now, there's certain things that you need to look for, and depending on the area, it can be different. Now you can see there's some big old holes right there. I don't know if you can see it through the water. Those are not quahog holes. So you're looking for a smaller hole, honey. Okay? Yep. And they're only gonna be that far down. And just try not to cut your hands. We're not gonna use a rake or anything like that. Yep, you gotta watch your hands. My dad used to lose more blood doing. Uh, I a baby well, that's what we're looking for. Good job, put him back down. Stick him so his hinge is down and his body, or his uh, shell is up, yep. There's a couple holes. Yep, well feel around in there. Where there's one, there's more. There it is. We're not able to really figure out a pattern like what the holes typically look like. We're finding a lot of little guys. You know, we're in these flats here. I want to find sandy areas. There are some over there. I can see them, but we don't want to get stuck right here. That wind is blowing us up here, but we might have to get out and push. 14 inches of water will float in. Well, I was just pushing the boat out. Stay right there. He's under my foot. I remember this feeling as a kid growing up. I think we got what we need, guys. Oh, that thing is huge. Ta-da! Oh, that thing All right, well, I'll keep pushing the boat. I felt him through my flip-flop, baby. That thing is literally the size of my... Yeah, we get a few more like that. We'll be in the money, honey. That's not edited. Like... Oh, he's not that big, man. He's big to me. Nice job. Well, it beats digging for him, you know, because a lot of the people come out with rakes, and I think rakes should be. Oh, yeah. Another one? Are you coming in or what? Yes. All you got to do is feel around with your toes. That's the sand. awesome. Shark? Yeah, well, there's three little baby, oh, yeah, there he is. baby bonnet heads. I hope he gets close. Maybe I'll grab him. Yeah. They've been checking us out. There, oh, he's coming here he comes, closer. here he comes. He's coming right to for us. Come to Papa. Come to Papa. Hey, I'm not against eating one of those. Can we? There's billions of them here. 
Yeah, they, oh, there people he is. eat them all the time, babe. But I got New England clam chowder on the brain, so. Yeah, we all do. That sounds so good right yeah. now. My mom's secret recipe. Secret. That's why she should not tell you. Okay, guys, I'm not sure what kind these are. But I'm not familiar with it, so it's safe not to, to mess with them. You can see how the ribs run this way on the quahog. Those run that way. Not messing with it. That's a good one. That's a nicer one, too. Well, all I'm doing is just holding on to the boat and letting it drift, feeling around with my feet. Oh, baby. We got chow. Holy crap. <sighs> That's a good That'll make some chowder. That compared to all the other ones. That's the one we're after. Small one. Bigger one. And ginormous one. I mean, it's literally the size of my head. Okay, maybe not that big. But he's still big. Second one I found. Look at this, guys. Scallops. Found a couple oysters, or I mean uh, scallops, scallops too. I found a bigger one over there, by where we were first. Another scallop. Yeah. This is crazy. Clapping at me. You can see the little blue eyes. Yep. Let's see if I can get them to swim. go you can't keep them here here he comes if he comes close to me again I'm gonna grab him here, he comes. here he comes here he comes come over here buddy Messing with sharks, huh? Yeah. You're blowing away, honey. No. We shall not blow away. I think that's a big one. Catch him? I know you do. I do. Oh, I he's cool. What is? Oh, yes, that's so cool. That one's bigger, too. Oh. He's out. That's so cool. Oh, his little eyes. I don't like the light. He's camera shy. All right, let's get him back in the water. Hey. I can see what you have to do. Ah! <laughs> it's good. Okay guys, well, let's get started. Here's what we're gonna do. What I've noticed with these clams that come out of the warm water, I know our refrigerator's set quite cold, but these guys don't like it as much. Now, we used to be able to keep ours in the refrigerator for, for days. These I just put in there last night and they're already given up. They're still fresh, they're still alive, they're just cold. You gotta figure the water we took them out of was either above 90 or close to 90 in some of the shallower areas. So they're just used to something completely different than the ones we used to catch up up north. But what you have, these aren't like a scallop where they have the one muscle. These types have a muscle on each side. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to, and it's important to do this over this strainer and this bowl so you catch any shell. You want to cut those two muscles and open it up and there's your clam so we want to save all of the juices from these guys all right um, all you're doing just cleaning everything out now up north 
I would take this sucker, put a little bit of sauce on there and down the hatch. But I'm not going to do that because we need all these clams, these cohogs. It's important, like I said, to save all the juice. There, look at all that lovely stuff coming out of there. That's a big one, guys. Now these are the muscles I was talking about. These pink spots. That that those are just as good to eat as any part of the clam. It's fairly tender. There we go. The reason I'm putting it through a strainer again is so that if I typically they're squeezed shut so so tightly that when you force the knife in you crack some of the shell and uh, these don't have as much sand in them as some clams see this guy's pinched shut a little bit more I might need a thinner knife see what I mean the ones that were on top and had that cold air circulate circulating all around them now that it's warmed up look at he's pinched there we go some of the other clams that have a longer neck and ex are exposed to the sand more when they're in and out of their shell those guys have a lot more sand but I'm not saying these won't have some in it so we're gonna try and strain as much as we can out but a little bit of grit is just part of the game all right there we go what's crazy is is when I was growing up in Cape Cod we everybody throw these out in their driveways and just drive over them so a lot of the driveways weren't asphalt they weren't concrete they weren't crushed concrete they weren't rock they were shells and uh, yeah they break up nice and looks pretty cool all white and you can remember the seagulls would go dig these up seagulls would pull them out of the ground the smaller ones take them up into the parking lot drop them they'd crack on the concrete or the asphalt and then they go down and eat them and that's what I'm gonna do to this one I got enough so I'm going down one one down the hatch raw okay I got the knife started I used the juice threw it in there I don't want to waste it now all we're doing is transferring it all over to one side of the shell make sure that's all cut loose now this is where I got my nickname, the little seagull, because if these were around, I wasn't leaving until they were gone. Got some cocktail sauce, just a dab of that, it's perfect, salute. No difference. Spectacular. Oh man, I missed that. Some recipes recommend you get rid of the, the black stuff. I'll just set it to the side. It isn't going to hurt you. It's more for looks how the chowder looks now this recipe is my mom's and uh, we've been eating this since I was a little kid and you get it pretty much everywhere you go down there and there's different variations of you know New England clam chowder but and all we're doing is we're just trying to dice them up. I like it fairly chunky, so I'm not going to get carried away. Some people even separate the, the harder pieces from the softer pieces. For example, like their feet or whatever you want to call it is a little bit harder. They separate those and they start cooking them before the softer pieces so that it's all kind of cooked equally. I am not going to bother with that because 
it isn't going to matter. It's going to be fantastic. All right. Get finished up on these guys. And then we're going to measure out, see how much we got. And that will determine how much ingredients we need to go with it. This recipe calls for one quart of clams, okay? I'm a little shy of that, so that's fine. I'll just kind of dilute some of the other ingredients. What I've got here is salted pork, okay? If you want to substitute bacon, you're more than welcome to. But along with your one quart, which is four cups, by the way, um, you're going to want, it's a half a pound of salted pork. So I'm saying that's absolutely plenty. Now you can see I cut it into like half inch cubes roughly. So now what I want to do is everything we're cooking here today, we want to kind of make it equal sizes. So that way we don't have to cook it more than the 20 minutes that we uh, are intending to. So once I get this cut into half inch cubes, well, this is going to be the start of our flavor and we're going to use the fat to bring everything together. We're going to throw this fat right in there, salted pork. And we're going to brown this until it's got a nice golden brown color to it. And that's going to render it down and get the fat that we want. Okay. All right, guess what? What? You're going to be on YouTube. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Mom. Love you. I'll talk to you a little later. Yeah, bye. All right, bye. If I would have told her she was going to be on YouTube, she'd have been like, yeah, no. Anyways, guys, I just learned something new. Now, my father's mother, Agnes, was born in Holland in 1907 and came to the United States in 1914. Always told my mom, and I was unaware of this, that celery makes things saltier soups and stuff like that and I literally said there's no way mom I don't believe it guess what I googled it 88 milligrams of sodium per cup Cer celery has a fairly high salt content for a vegetable and then it says down below too it doesn't necessarily make it a high sodium food so people that you know are trying to stay away from salt do not need to worry about it but i just found that interesting okay now what we're going to do i'm only throwing a little bit of celery in there as a matter of fact that this this recipe doesn't really call for it but i like it and it adds a little color okay so this recipe calls for two medium onions now we don't have quite the amount of clams that we need so we're just going to go like one and a half now you can see i stuck the uh salted pork on a paper towel just to kind of let it sit for aside for right now now we'll just stick our onions right in there in the grease and we're going to turn the heat up medium medium heat probably will work and uh, we're going to stir this stuff together while we get our potatoes ready to go. It won't take long though, guys. We've got to make sure we don't overcook these. We just want them to get translucent. We just want them to soften up a little bit. For medium-sized potatoes, now it doesn't ask for red skins, but I like them. I like using red skins because of the color, so it's probably not traditional you know but it's what we have and i probably would have chose them anyways just because of the color factor and if it looks good it's gonna taste just as good 
How do you like the new look? Got two cameramen going. Anyhow, this is already smelling great. And you can see they're soft. Starting to get translucent. And I think it's time to add the taters. All right, now we're gonna strain off the clams. Because we don't want the clams in yet, we just want the, their juice. Oh yeah, baby. All right, so there's all the juice. Now, we're going to make sure that we have enough water in here liquid to cover the potatoes by about a half inch or so okay now i have it topped off with water we're gonna let this go for a little bit i'm gonna put the lid on so that we can get those potatoes nice and soft now the key is guys is you do not want to overcook your potatoes you don't so keep a close eye on this okay okay so i've got about three and a half, three, three and a half cups of milk right there. Um, the recipe calls for four. Okay, we got two tablespoons of butter. It's very important that you do not boil the milk in the butter, okay? And that's looking about right. This is ready to go. I'm just gonna add the pork and the clams and I'm going to go ahead and bring this back to a simmer and let it go for 10 minutes okay well it's been about 10 minutes so now I'm going to add this to it Yum, that smells awesome. Just gonna add some salt. You probably don't need much. The clams are pretty salty. Some fresh ground pepper. We removed it from the heat, and now we're just gonna let it ripen. And let it sit for at least an hour, okay? Let everything come together and blend. It's the longest stinking hour I ever remember. Stuff smells amazing. But anyways, um, can't wait till my wife and kids get home. She went to pick them up from school. Uh, anyhow, guys, I'm going to say a quick prayer because I'm going to give this a shot. And I uh, hope you all are having a wonderful day. If you're not, hang in there. Just remember, tough people last. Tough times don't. Dear God, I want to thank you so much for this day. We thank you for all of our many blessings, dear Lord. And uh, we thank you for all the abundant fish and different types of food that we can acquire through your creation, dear God. We thank you for that. And we just ask forgiveness of our sins through your Son's blood, Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray, amen. Okay, well, the timer hasn't gone off. It's got about a minute left. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not waiting any longer. I'm starving, and it smells wonderful. I'm going old school. Don't forget about the crackers, guys. Oyster crackers. Got to have them. I'm just dipping this thing right in here. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Moisture crackers. Yum. Yum.
That's fantastic. Oh my goodness. Mmm. I cannot wait for Ellie and Ben and Mom to try this. Anyway, guys. That's that. That's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And, um, yeah. Don't forget. Leave a thumbs up if you like our videos. And I uh, hope you enjoyed something a little different. This is what I grew up doing and my mom's recipe. Fantastic. I'll be honest with you. It's recipes like that that you grow up with and you just kind of take for granted. And then when you move away from home, that was a long time ago, uh, and you don't get to eat like that, you really miss miss those days on the beach on low tide digging clams with my mom and dad and my brothers huh, some of the best times of my life man but anyhow we love you guys we thank you so much for watching god bless see you in the next one we're out